Brendan is very cool. Brendan79, thank you for becoming a patron. You are what keeps the dream alive. All right, let's get into it. So this is interesting. What's up everybody, Do right back at it again with another video. And about a week or two ago, one of the developers from a tiny studio called Item42 sent me a message via Twitter. This is a message that I really wanna talk about, but before I really get into that, I kinda wanna explain what this studio is and why I know them. Cause a lot of you really don't remember or haven't seen the previous videos that I've done on them. So I'm gonna go ahead and explain. Item42 is like the tale of two brothers, Regan, the programmer and lead developer, and Brett, 3D artist and creative developer. Developer. Based in the UK, these two wanted to go out and make their own SWAT game. That SWAT game was known as Blister. Blister is a tactical single player shooter set during a modern reimagining of the English Civil Wars. Blending tense FPS combat with strategic planning, you assume the role of Officer Abel and command your NPC officers through a series of challenging counter and terrorist operations. From raiding insurgent strongholds to resolving hostage standoffs and defusing bombs, Blister is a counter terrorism sandbox, and the choice is yours to play as fair mindedly or ruthlessly as you please. Lead an elite fire arms team through varied sieges and hostage rescues from abandoned offices, council estates, and power plants to countryside mansions, slaughterhouses, and oil rigs. Units were able to use things like tasers, beanbags, and flashbangs, lethal and non-lethal weaponry to subdue, incapacitate, or eliminate your aggressors. Use psychological tactics to conjole combatants into giving up their weapons or engage in a full frontal assault, leaving no man standing. I think one cool feature that this game had was very reminiscent of Door Kickers, which if you don't know what that is, it's basically a top-down shooter where you can plan out how your team is going to move in before everything takes place. And you can actually tell them what to do as soon as they get to like a door or to a window and stuff like that. Basically like that, but in first person. This was a really cool aspect that I actually quite liked, but I think another notable thing was just the banging music. Yeah, this stuff's original. This was a game that I was excited for. But you know, it's a small team, like I'd mention it every now and then, just to show what they're actually working on. But I wanted to give them space, you know, just so that they could finish up the game and get it out to people. But one thing that I started to notice is that the game kind of stopped giving out updates. Yeah, for like a couple of months, I started to notice that the game was basically going silent. I began to wonder what was going on. So, you know, I shot them a message via Twitter and to my surprise, they actually replied to me. They had told me that they were still working on the game, but you know, the company's coming under hard times like it's hard for them to like find funding for the game itself so basically what they started doing was creating a bunch of assets so that they can sell on the store like on their twitter they were advertising a lot of stuff for the store and if i remember correctly they had said that it's very hard for them to find an investor that actually wants to invest in a single player game which kind of makes sense because generally investors are looking for something mostly multiplayer based because they don't think that they're going to get a whole lot of money from a single player game nowadays which is kind of just a shame in my opinion but i thought well well, they're still working on it, so I mean, I'll just give them some more time. But as time passed, you know, I started to notice that they weren't really talking that much or showing anything. About a year later, I decided to shoot them another message like, hey, what's going on, man? Are you guys still, you know, doing the project? And they said, quote, we're still kind of negotiating with a few publishers, which takes a very long time and is full of uncertainty. We're also still busy doing other projects to pay the bills as usual. Blister has kind of taken a back seat for a bit while we go through trying to get it funded. That's just game dev, I suppose. You know, it's really heartbreaking when you see a game that has a really cool idea, but it never really gets the funding to get off the ground. I really tried hard to get people to, you know, look at this game, but it's just very unfortunate that it never got to be where it wanted to be. Now, that's not to say that the game is done and over with, because the developers did respond to the way that I was covering the game. Quote, hey, just wanted to say I really appreciate the video that you just put out. People in the comments are saying it looks cool, are so nice to see, and you were super understanding in the video comments. Unfortunately, we still don't have an update on Blister for the same 
same reasons really. We've actually started work on something new and much smaller so we don't need an entire team to finish it but even with that I am determined to get Blister out there since it's my baby. Hopefully this just means we'll be able to make it even better when we do get the funding we need to finish it. And that was the last time that I had actually heard from this studio until recently. Getting back to that message that I talked about at the beginning of the video, it has been a year since the last time I had heard from the developers and they just shot me a Twitter message. They say here, Hey, I suppose you've seen what we're working on now. It's not exactly a tactical shooter, but hopefully it's still something that interests you. Just as before, we'd love to get you a key. No obligation, of course, since your channel isn't generally focused on exactly this kind of game, but just to show our appreciation since you've been there longer than anyone else ah yeah, well you know it's a tiny studio you got to start somewhere so i thought i'd check it out you know talk to you guys about it just to see what you guys think this game that i'm about to show you is not a tactical game but it's definitely one that looks like a lot of fun and that's really all that matters so here goes They sure know how to make a soundtrack. And I gotta say, this game looks a lot more polished than Blister. And that original music sounds really good. I think they said that they were working on this game for about a year, I think. And for a year, this is actually not that bad. So this game is called Parish, and Parish is a horde slaying shooter with dismal creatures roaming purgatory. The game is essentially a brief arena on a huge ascending platform where players slay thousands of lost souls in order to earn safe passage into Elysium, the final resting ground of the worthy. This is a cooperative game, so you can enlist the help of your friends to keep the platform ascending to the afterlife by slaying the heretics who are trying to spoil Elysium. Your job is to keep the cogs and chains that pull the platform clear of crushed skulls and anything that wishes to halt it. But you're not alone. Reviving healing and shielding defensive equipment will be provided to you by the Pivians of the Pantheon. Now this next part wasn't too clear to me. I think he said something like, when you're fighting you earn gold and if you don't put your gold inside of that bank and you die, which I'm assuming you use the gold to actually get all these defensive items, you'll lose it to these scavengers of purgatory unless your friends want to revive you for a mad dash back to pantheon that part wasn't too clear to me but it sounds really cool so what happens to the people who actually successfully ascend to elysium well apparently it's a closely guarded secret so you have to find out when you actually play the game i mean i really like what i hear and i definitely like what i see this is definitely something that i could like play with my friends on for sure and uh yeah so basically what the developers are trying to do with this game is to see how far a core team of two can visually and mechanically push a tight multiplayer FPS shooter in just over two years of development and I will say that I am pretty impressed like these guys aren't like you know people who just like picked up this stuff no these guys are actual like professionals trying to do their own game with years of experience so I'm definitely excited to see where this goes and if you're just as excited as I am I have a link to their steam page down in the description like I said before you got to start somewhere right this game looks like a lot of fun and I think the best thing about it is that if they get a lot of funding from this game then they'll start working on blister more it's a win-win if you ask me and that's where i think i'm gonna end the video so what are your thoughts on parish does it look like a game you would be interested in let me know what you think down in the comments below if you enjoy the fact that i cover indie games like parish and blister be sure to like the video share the video and comment down below if you're someone that's new to the channel subscribe and ding the bell you never know you might find a game that you might like on here if you're someone that would like to support the channel just like brendan 79 did check out my patreon and with that all being said i want to thank everybody for coming out to watch and i guess i'll catch you in the next one Bye bye